Good morning and welcome to our worship on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. We thank all those who are helping us out in worship today. Thank you to Carol Larson and the uh, praise group for sharing their gift of music. Thank you for Tyler, Tyler Grunwald for filming and directing this worship service. Thank you to John Nelson for producing this week's video. And thank so many of you for helping us out at the church, doing all the legwork around the churches during this week and on this day. Just a few dates to remember. Rally Sunday is September 12th at both Faith and Bethany. September 19th, Bethany will celebrate the burning of its mortgage at their Sunday worship service. And on October 10th at Faith Lutheran, we'll be celebrating the mortgage burning as well. We begin our worship today with the invocation. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promised to be with us each and every step of the way. Amen. Amen. confess our faith. We have not loved you with all of our heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not responded to your promise. We have put up walls to keep people in distance. We have failed to respond when someone is hurting. We have not responded to your promise. We are captured by our desires for material wealth. We forget those who do not have food or shelter. We have not responded to your promise. We abuse the gifts of your creation. We destroy your beauty out of ignorance and greed. We have not responded to your promise. We fail to respond to your call to do justice. We seek only comfort for ourselves. We have not responded to your promise.
we are broken, but God's promises are not. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. God's promise calls us together for a reason. Let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers and attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that rises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. A reading from Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. So now, Israel, give heed to the statues and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who... When you, they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 15 will be read responsibly by full verse. Lord, who may dwell in your ta tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill, those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They, knew, they do not slander with the tongue. They do, not, they do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is a reading from the letter of James, the first chapter. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that is the power to save your souls. But he does do, but be doers of the world, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, be not hearers who forget, but doers who act. 
they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, the religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unsustained by the world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Mark wrote, Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless it is washed. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites. For as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to the human traditions. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is, with, it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Christ to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, if you're thinking that today's gospel is all about personal hygiene and politeness, well, guess again. And if you're thinking that today's gospel is mainly concerned with the Department of Public Health regulations and the do's and don'ts of personal hygiene, well, you might want to uh, want to look deeper, much deeper into what Jesus is really saying. For Jesus isn't merely readjusting Jewish laws or tweaking the kosher uh, laws. Rather, he's on the attack, going right to the heart of the matter as he usually does. And that's why his sparring partners, the scribes and Pharisees, are so uncomfortable in today's reading. In today's gospel, we find that the scribes and Pharisees, the elite of the Jewish system, are riled, they're exasperated, infuriated because Jesus is calling into question their moral universe. Jesus is tampering with their most cherished, time-honored assumptions about good and evil and how the world is supposed to be ordered. Consider how these opponents attack Jesus in today's story. At first, the scribes and Pharisees go after him directly as they ask Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Now, the first thing that we've got to get straight is this. 
The scribes and Pharisees are not the Israelite public health department. They have no concept at this time about bacteria or germs. Rather, what the religious elite imagined to be in jeopardy was their whole view of the universe. A universe that they developed that had put a fence around their faith to make sure that their laws were safe and secure. And because their laws were safe and secure, they would remain elevated in their system. They were especially fixated on the place of human beings in that universe. And again, especially their place. You see, in the universe of the scribes and Pharisees, evil was primarily an out there problem. It was someone else's problem. They were the chosen people. They were set apart by God, made holy, so they couldn't be the problem. The religious of that time, the scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, and others, believed that they lived in a dangerous, defiling world, an world where there were all sorts of things, realities, and people that could invade their neatly ordered lives. These external threats had to be guarded against and, if possible, walled off. And it was the responsibility of the scribes and Pharisees to find the legal way to do that. So to preserve the holiness of the set-apart chosen people, the scribes and Pharisees drew up a number of laws, 613, which became the fine print interpretation of God's commandments. And that's what is being referred to in the third verse of today's reading when the scribes and Pharisees speak to others about the traditions of the elders. Some of those traditions were the dietary regulations, including washing of the hands and kosher food rules that had become so codified in the numerous volumes of the Talmud and became the way that the scribes and Pharisees could elevate themselves while lowering others. But as witnessed in today's gospel, this whole well-ordered universe of the Old Testament that was elaborated upon by generations of rabbis who wrote their thoughts in Talmud was now being threatened by Jesus and his followers. Because Jesus and his disciples took the well-ordered, regulated universe and dismissed many of those elementary rules and regulations as being ridiculous. So the scribes and Pharisees started to wrangle over how Jesus and his disciples conducted themselves and how they performed or failed to perform all the prescribed ritual washings and how and with whom they prepared and ate food with. Jesus, don't your disciples follow the rules and live according to the traditions of the elders? Now that's a question you'd expect to hear from people who envision that their universe, their wall is starting to crumble. It's what is said when a person feels as though everything that they've ever counted on is being taken away. Now in my 60 plus years, there have been many changes concerning how we view what is right and wrong, what's good or bad, what's in and who's out. And I'm guessing that it's not only me, but also many of you that are in that same boat. Think about some of our national or international issues that have arisen over the last number of years. We are asked to take a stand on many issues of the day concerning Afghanistan or Syria, Islam, gun control, illegal immigration, abortion rights, voting rights, the economy, the environment, and on and on. And I'm guessing that many of you are like me in that you struggle to mesh your conscience with the practical when dealing with many of these moral issues of the day. In today's gospel, the scribes and Pharisees had a right to be concerned because Jesus did, in fact, come to make changes and to readjust the moral universe. Jesus came to reverse the flow of things and challenge the connection between what's out there and what's in here. The scribes and Pharisees seemed fixated on evil being the enemy, for, and the evil was always out there, an enemy to be kept out, 
walled off, warded off, so that those in power could maintain and bask in their God-given chosen holiness. But Jesus points out that the worst, most damaging manifestation of evil isn't out there somewhere. Rather, evil always makes its way in here. Evil is an inside job. Evil works on us from the inside out rather from the outside in. Evil always aims for the heart of things, zeroing in on our hearts. Evil forever sees, seeks a place of residence in the center of our being. And from that command center, it works its very worst damage. There's nothing outside of us that is evil unless it makes itself, or makes its way inside. Where it rots the inside and goes to the very heart of our being. So in today's gospel, rather than striking up a conversation with the scribes and Pharisees and engaging in a little of who's right and who's wrong, Jesus turns the table and reverses all the finger pointing and name calling and proposed a positively revolutionary revision concerning how they and we are to look at our moral and spiritual universe. Listen to me, all of you, Jesus warned. There is nothing outside a person that can, by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. Jesus, as usual, struck at the very heart of the matter by having all look within themselves, all to look at their own hearts. Jesus said Isaiah the prophet from long ago had it right all along. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It's a heart thing. And that's what Jesus wants to take center stage in our universe. Jesus wants us to zero in on our hearts. For it's the heart that houses the evil. It's from inside, from inside the heart that comes all the crud, chaos, and corruption. All the stuff that turns us rotten, warps our behavior, cheapens our life, hatches schemes to get us what we want. And the church is a name for that. We call it sin, original sin. The sin that no one of us had to be taught. For even little babies or precious little children somehow, some way, pick up this original thing all by themselves. So no one is exempt from it. No one. All of us, young or old, liberal or conservative, conservative, male or female, straight or gay, we're all 100% sinners and we all suffer from that deadly heart disease. But fortunately, it's our hearts that Jesus came to heal. The scribes and Pharisees constructed their image of the universe that left everything at a skin deep level. Do the right things, follow the laws, keep up the right appearances and everything will be fine. But Jesus said, they've got it wrong. That's not how it works, you hypocrites. Evil has, since the day of, day of Adam and Eve, infiltrated the innermost part of our being. It's woven itself into our very fiber, fiber because evil is an inside job. And that's why Jesus always, always aimed at the heart. That's why Jesus goes after our inner self to fight against the evil and to make our souls his. I appreciate how former Northwestern Synod Bishop Larry Woolribe described this. Bishop Larry wrote, Jesus isn't much of a dermatologist, but he's one heck of a heart surgeon. And especially his heart, tra his heart transplants or more accurately, creating a new heart within all who belong to him, all who draw themselves to him. So this is not a skin-deep level stuff. 
Rather, Jesus goes all the way inside as he allows the baptismal waters to seep through our pores and the bread and wine of Holy Communion to collect in our inner being. And his words, he lets rattle in our eardrums and find a home well within. Because Jesus bore right down to our very heart and soul, fixing us up from the inside out. And that's how God's universe usually works, from the inside out. And that's how God wants us to work in this world as well, from the inside out. God works from in here, at Faith and Bethany Lutheran churches, to then go out there to all those many who need us, that's around us both near and far. Yes, from the inside out, that's how Jesus operates, reclaiming our hearts and then sending us out to share that good news with others. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors and deacons and leaders who echo your expansive, generous welcome. And we pray for the whole creation that plants and animals have the habitat resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for all generations to come. Lord, hear our prayer. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be, for words to express the whole. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be.
for words to express so. Dear Lord, we lift up to you individuals in possessions of authority. President Biden, his administration, the United States Senate and House, Governor Waltz and the state legislature and our local authorities. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of all people. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need. Support and encourage those who are unemployed and underemployed or experiencing poverty. Bring food and shelter and clothes and stability for daily life. We lift up before you today all who are in need. Marilyn, Jack, Iris, Dell, Lori, Jan, Janine, Kurt, Lars, Goldie, Dawn, Jan, Terry, John, Karen, Ashley, Colleen, Talia, Leo, Harper, Hazel, and Kendall, and all others in need of God's healing. Lord, hear our prayer. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be, for words to express so. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be, for words to express so. We give thanks for the faithfully departed who showed us how to honor God with our hearts. We especially lift up today the family and friends of Joe Hasselberg. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, hear our prayer. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be or words to express. Oh, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to be, for words to express so. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of your promised gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.